What's going on guys, I'm Entity Maze, here with my review of the latest Pokemon Sun and Moon anime episode, episode 77, Nanu's Grand Trial, Lycan Rock Awakens. With that title now said though, get relaxed everybody, as I will now jump right into this episode review. So the episode begins off with Nanu and Ash preparing for the Grand Trial, both of them having very serious looks on their faces too, which is quite nice to see. In fact when the battle begins with us getting this versus screen, Ash gives us this look, whereas he's just smiling in Olivia's and Harla's versus screen. So that's very nice attention to detail, and actually shows us that Ash doesn't want to mess around. Anyway, for this Grand Trial, there's a twist. Ash can only use one Pokemon, whereas Nanu is allowed to use three Pokemon. So Ash is in for a hard time, and he decides to use Dusk Lycanroc due to recently getting stronger with him and believing he tamed its red eyes. Before we move on though, seeming as this is an episode dedicated to battling, I will not be giving my thoughts on the matchups in this storytelling section, but rather when it comes to the full review later on. So keep that in mind. Jumping back into the story though, it's Lycanroc vs Crocodile first, which Lycanroc had a hard time at first due to Crocodile's counter. Its red eyes even appeared once again when its fur got dirty, but within seconds, it disappears due to Ash taming it in episode 75. Nano then starts to question if Ash is using his full power due to Crocodile easily deflecting everything Lycanroc throwed at them, however once they're in this, Ash and Lycanroc get really serious and pull off a really fast Cell Rock and Rock Throw, which Counter couldn't counter due to the speed of it, and Lycanroc successfully defeated Crocodile. Next up was Sableye, and Nanu then starts to judge Ash's moves and if he's a good enough trainer for Lycanroc, as it seemed like it was more powerful when its red eyes appeared, which it appeared once again due to getting struck in a mean look. Ash denies that he's a bad trainer and actually successfully managed to command Lycanroc when its red eyes were up to use Stone Edge, which surprised Nanu, as of course it's a new move, and it actually made Sableye faint. It only took one hit, Lycanroc then going back to its green eyes. Nanu surprised by his loss then sends out his last Pokemon, Persian. But before the battle begins, Tapu Bulu offers a Citrus Berry to Lycanroc so it's fully healed when going against this Pokemon, which I find fair to be honest due to Lycanroc taking so much damage beforehand. When the actual battle begins though, Nanu commands Persian to use Dog Pulse so he could get Lycanroc's red eyes to return as he knew those red eyes would be Ash's biggest downfall and the key to victory, Ash even losing his call which made Nanu pleased. But after Ash realised this, he tries to calm Lycanroc down, but Lycanroc actually attacks Ash, and once Ash stares deeply into its eyes, Ash realises that the red eyes don't come out from anger, but rather because his power just increased, and Ash himself needed to realise that, so he could command Lycanroc. Everybody is amazed by this discovery, and what do you know, Ash and Lycanroc with this boosted power managed to win against Nanu's Persian. But unlike the other battles, there was a cool Z-move collision from Continental Crush and Black Hole Eclipse, Lycanroc Learn Counter which is nice I guess, and we actually got pretty fast action between Lycanroc and Persian which was pretty sweet. More on that later though. Nanu fully surprised by this victory then starts to recognise Ash as a good trainer and gives him the Dark Anium Z. Nah, just kidding, Ash isn't good enough to be a Dark type trainer apparently, so Ash got the Lycanium Z instead that Nanu had on him, which was actually a really nice twist. Also, GG to all of those who predicted Ash would get this Z crystal. I thought for sure that he would get the Dark Anium Z so he could use it when Toraka evolves, but I guess not. And this actually once again confirms that from now on with Trials and the anime, anything is possible. Any Z crystal can't be the prize, which is crazy, yet cool at the same time. I love trying to predict though, that's why I have my own discussion series. <laughs> oh, I really hope we can still get Incineroar in the future though. Regardless, because Ash cleared his grand trial now, towards the end of this episode, we then see him depart from Ula Ula Island to go back home to Meli Meli Island, even asking Ace Roller to visit the Pokemon school sometime. And yes, Please do, we need more of you Ace Roller. <laughs> Ace Roller even asked Ash to come visit Ula Ula Island again sometime too, so it can work either way. Nanu though didn't say goodbye as it wasn't his style, but it's confirmed that he really likes Ash now and actually enjoyed the battle he had against him a lot. Aww. With that story now said though, let's now move on to my overall thoughts of this episode. To be honest, this episode wasn't as great as I thought it would be, basing it off the summaries and previews we had received. 
Like for example, in one of my previous discussions, I was stated that this episode was the episode I was looking most forward to for this arc. Simply because Ash was going to sweep a kahuna. It was so hype. However, how it was done in this episode didn't really make me feel excitement. In fact, I'd probably say I only thoroughly enjoyed one out of the three matchups, which would be Lycanroc vs Persian. So, the reason why I didn't like how Ash swept Nanu is because he literally 2 hit KO'd and 1 hit KO'd 2 of Nanu's Pokemon, which didn't really make for interesting strategies on Ash's side of the field, which is quite disappointing to me. I would have loved to see more strategies so we could feel amazed with what Ash came up with. And actually, by thinking about it, I would have loved to see Nanu look like he's a really powerful trainer too, just like he was depicted in episode 74. But, he was just seen as a weakling. In fact, talking about episode 74, Crocodile was seen as a really strong Pokemon too, but because Lycanroc easily defeated it within this episode, it just looked like a pushover now, which is quite sad. So, yeah. All of this I just explained is my reasoning for why this episode wasn't as great as I initially thought it would be. But, let's try focus on some positive factors now. So going back to those first two battles, apart from Lycanroc doing not much of course, I did actually like the strategies Nanu had for Ash, such as using Mean Luck to freeze Lycanroc in place. Also love the little trust they added for the anime, as normally it means you cannot switch your Pokemon out. I also like the Sand Tomb strategy again, how Crocodile dodged attacks using its tail, and Shadow Snake was pretty nice to see animated as well. So because of me liking these factors, I wouldn't call the first two matchups bad overall, but rather, just kinda decent, with of course the Lycanroc nitpick I stated earlier being the biggest downfall of these matches. And that pretty much wraps up all my thoughts on those first two matchups already. But before we move on to the final matchup, I do want to state what I believe was the strongest point for this episode, which is Nanu's character. Nanu was constantly questioning if Ash was sure he wanted to do a certain move, judge the actual moves he uses, the speech he gave about power was cool, and of course, Nanu making Ash lose his cool, Ash getting angry, was amazing, as it allowed for Nanu to get the upper hand. Like seriously, the writing on Nanu's character within this episode, I found stronger than all the battles combined. Really cool to see his full character awaken too, when he isn't just being lazy. <laughs> Although that laziness is lovable too. <sighs> I really hope we can see him again in the future. Regardless though, I know for a fact that somebody will say, well, the reason why Lycanroc didn't hit Nanu's Pokemon that much is simply because Nanu was trying to wind up Ash, like you said. And yes, that's kinda true, but still, it would've been nice to see more moves from Lycanroc, you know? Like, I can't be the only one who was expecting more from Lycanroc in those first two matchups. They ended so quickly, too. But anyway, I think I've talked about that enough now. So let's now actually move on to what I've said is the only matchup I thoroughly enjoyed, which was Lycanroc vs Persian. Why I actually like this matchup is firstly because a Z-move was used in a creative way within a Pokemon battle, aka using Continental Crush on Black or Eclipse. That was really clever, and actually did make me shout out loud saying, wow, that was sick. The fact that the rock started hitting Persian 2 after the Z-move was used was a nice little addition too, and makes perfect sense. Another reason why I like this matchup though is because of the fast paced action towards the end, which put a smile on my face. And finally, we of course have the biggest moment within this matchup, which was the truth behind Red Eyes Lycanroc. Like I said in the storytelling section, that was a pretty nice twist. But the way it was done by making Lycanroc attack Ash and have this whole build up to it within the sock was the most amazing part. The writers tried to trick us by thinking it was bad because Ash and many others thought it was a bad thing. But nope, it's a good thing, as it gets more stronger. This basically being like a Furnape's Blaze and Ash Greninja's transformation, where they both get more power, but just shown through red dyes within Lycanroc. It's also great to show this power through the red dyes, because like the games, for example when Dust Lycanroc uses the Z-move, the red dyes show. So that's nice how they are staying faithful to the games too, in my opinion. Overall, as you can hopefully tell from this, I just find this whole Dusk Lycanroc development to be fantastic now that we have fully gotten answers. Remember in my previous review, which is taken down, thanks show pro. Anyway, in that review I was stated that I was confused that the Red Eyes returned for this episode's preview, despite Ash teaming for Red Eyes in episode 75. Well, that makes sense to us now too. Basically, Ash only managed to tame it that the red dyes don't appear when its fur gets dirty, and then in this episode, it's revealed that it only appears when its power is at max. That's great in my opinion. Lycanroc for sure is Ash's ace on his team too. But, 
Now that you've gotten your development like and rock, can we now move on to Rowlet anime creators? Please? <laughs> Overall, for that Lycanroc vs Persian battle though, now that I've explained why I liked it, as you can see, it pretty much was the saving point for this episode, along with how the writers wrote Nanu's character. Also, you know, Persian managed to withstand attacks in like Nanu's other Pokemon, so that was nice. <laughs> and that's pretty much all I can say for the story, seeming as this was an episode dedicated to battling. Of course, like always though, the little thoughts I gave in the storytelling section count towards why I like this episode too. Regardless, with that said, let's now move on to the final aspects, which is the animation and music aspects. Firstly for the animation, to be quite honest there wasn't that much highlight, but still, I like the effect of a gloomy night sky at the start of the episode to then transition to the sunrise, that was quite beautiful, and as always the lighting effects from the Z moves really looked nice on the characters. Of course, as for everything else, it just looked decent, including the already seen Z moves. As for the music aspects though, unlike the animation, this part was fantastic throughout the entire episode. But to give one highlight, I guess my favourite tune I heard throughout the episode was the XY League music. I don't think we've heard it that much before, hence why I've chosen to mention it, and it's a beautiful tune anyway. With everything I've said in this video though, I've decided to give this episode a rating of 6.5 out of 10. Originally I was stuck between 6 and 7, so it's just best to go in between those numbers. The reason why I had trouble though is because I did enjoy some elements of this episode, but the first two matchups which lasted most of the episode just weren't that great to me, me wishing for more action. However, by all means, I am not saying that this is a bad episode, go check it out if you haven't. However, if you have watched this episode, let me know in the comments down below what you actually thought of it though, I'd love to hear. Before I sign off though, this of course is the last of the Ula Ula Island Challenge arc, so just like we did for the Akala Island Challenge and the Segalia arc, we're gonna give a rating to the overall arc by adding all my review ratings together to find the average rating. So, because half the Ula Ula Island arc reviews are unfortunately taken down by ShowPro, I'm seriously thinking of making a website for taking down reviews of mine. <laughs> anyway, episode 73 got a 9 out of 10, episode 74 got a 7 out of 10, Episode 75 got a 7 out of 10, Episode 76 got a 10 out of 10, making it the best of this arc, and finally, this episode of course got 6.5 out of 10, making it my least favourite episode of this arc, but by all means, I don't hate or dislike it, it's just decent I guess. But, when putting all of these ratings together, we get an average of 7.9 out of 10, this being the overall rating for this arc. And I think that's pretty fair actually, it was an overall enjoyable walk to me. And I guess I liked it more than the Akala Island Dog, as the Akala Island Dog got a 7 out of 10. So, yeah. However, I would definitely say that Olivia's Grand Trial Battle is better than Nanu's and even Hala's, making Nanu's go to the bottom. But once again, I'm not hating on this episode. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna trigger so many people. But we're all entitled to our own opinions, it would be much appreciated if you respect mine, and as always, I will respect yours in the comments below. Regardless, with the Ula Ula Island Dog rating now stated, it's time to sign off. So if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to leave a like and a subscribe for future Pokemon content, it helps out a ton, you'll also become a member of the Entity Squad. For now, this is Entity Maze. Signing out. Thank you for watching.